Hey everyone, Jason here from Off The Beaten Path and we're on the way to the next destination here. We've just come down off Blue Rag. We're heading north on the Dargo High Plains Road. Um, not too long, we're back on the bitumen section approaching the Great Alpine Road up to Mount Hotham. As you can see there, we're coming up to uh, that intersection right now. Turning left, now today um, we're taking another track that I've never tracked, taken before and it starts right here, pretty much where the Dago High Plains Road actually meets the Great Alpine Road. Uh, and that is the Twins Track or the Twins Jeep Track. Um, which I've never driven before um, and this takes us across to Mount Murray which I've never been to before either so was pretty keen to uh, try this out on this uh, shakedown trip for the uh, new transfer case in the patch. So this track is one that is seasonally closed um, so that is from the King's Birthday June long weekend through to the end of October beginning of November. Starts off pretty steady, of course no high country track is complete without the obligatory 180 degree switchbacks, um, but you can see here it doesn't take very long and you're starting to climb up above the road and there's some cracking views to be had from this track. Um, you can see here as we come up over the rise we're looking south back towards Dargo and the Blue Rag Range. Um, just amazing views to be had from this track. So this is not a difficult track at all and I highly recommend uh, if you're into driving scenic tracks in the high country this is one to check out for sure. Look at this coming up this hill again amazing views out there. Little campsite site just tucked away there on the left hand side so I did find quite a few of those um, hidden away on this track as well. This one coming up here is your last opportunity. Uh, as I said, this track is seasonally closed, so you've got a little campsite just in there, and you can see here, this is where the gate is for the seasonal track closure. So, um, in theory, you could sneak up there into that little campsite, um, as it's just before the seasonal track closure gate, uh, even during winter. Be a cracking winter camp, that's for sure. And once you pass there, we're working our way around the southern side of this range. Now, this track does form part of the uh, Bicentennial Great Alpine Walk as well. A little spring there just coming across the track as you saw. And the vast majority of this Twins track is actually on the side of the hill with a fairly steep drop off on one side. It's not always apparent just how steep that drop off is. Uh, there's a lot of trees and other vegetation along there in different sections. Pretty much the whole way along though, you've got this very steep drop off on the right hand side. Not a lot of room on this track. It's not one of the uh, more well traveled tracks as I uh, understand it. And um, again, coming here, some cracking views down to the south there, looking back towards Mount Buffalo and the Buffalo Range. I think you're getting some idea of, you know, just how scenic this track is. Um, sections like this are actually fairly open. And it certainly does vary a bit. So coming up here, a little bit of a hollow between uh, two of the peaks either side. Uh, the walking track apparently does go uh, up over that uh, hill on the right hand side there and comes down the one on the left. I couldn't see anything that looks like a form of walking track. I guess it's for keen cross country hikers. As you can see, somebody's used this as a camp spot and make it a make a great campsite. It's pretty level, a little bit exposed probably. Um, so on a windy day or a windy night, 
you probably wouldn't want to be here. It's fairly exposed. But um, when the weather's good, nice and calm, be a cracking spot to uh, set up a camp for sure. Yeah, it's about 14 k's um, from the Great Alpine Road uh, along the Twins track here till you get to the Mount Murray track where we head up towards Mount Murray. And again, you can see just on the right hand side of frame there, that amazing view looking back over the mountains. Really is one of the best tracks I've driven for just getting views while you're driving along. As the driver, of course, you should keep your eye on where you go and where you're driving. Um, but yeah, plenty of, plenty of spots to pull up and enjoy the view if you want to as well. And yeah, as you can see, look, nothing on this track is, is difficult. You can certainly drive this in uh, two-wheel drive. For most of these sections here, that's uh, certainly true. A little bit of a forested section here and you can see the trees are still recovering from the bushfires from a few years ago. Probably be saying that for a while, I guess we will. And still working our way around that northern side of the range here. You see the work that's gone in to cut this track in uh, with the rocks on the left hand side there where the tracks actually had to be cut out of the hillside. And yeah, you've got that view along most of this section here. Um, a fair bit of vegetation and some fairly mature trees along the track. Does undulate a little bit. But yeah, really, mostly this, this track, the Twins track here, is pretty much just a nice scenic drive. Yeah, you know, certainly if you're not used to doing a lot of travelling in the high country, it'd be a uh, big good one to pick. As, uh, as you'll see later in the video, it does link up with the Selwyn Creek Road in the Buckland Valley. Again, quite a steep gorge there that we've just come around the north side of. South side, looking north. And for most of the 14 k's along here, this what you see and is pretty much what you're getting all the way along. Um, lots of dead wood on the side of the tracks, reasonably tight. The odd forested section like this from time to time. Really quite an enjoyable drive. Again, taking in those views. Much as much time as I spend in the high country, enjoying the view out over the ranges just never gets old. Um, never seems to be quite the same. Even when you go back to spots you've visited previously, just never gets old. So here we're working our way west around towards Mount Murray and I'm pretty sure that hill there in the distance is the eastern side of Mount Murray and this section through here the, the track actually turns into a bit of a ridgeline track as you'll see which I wasn't expecting uh, that's the thing with these tracks too, you get out and explore them, you just never know what you're going to get. If 
fair few of the uh, dead looking snow gums up at this altitude. And again, this section of track now is probably starting to get a little less defined, doesn't have the two wheel marks that you used to see. A little bit rocky and, and loose, but you know, really not that difficult. You can see there, Mount Murray track is straight ahead, which is where we're heading. And the continuation of the Twins Jeep track was the right hand leg that you just saw there. This little climb here, is probably the loosest, rockiest section of the whole Mount Murray track. And I still wouldn't really call this difficult. It's got a bit of grade to it, and it's a little bit loose. The car's working a bit, but I wouldn't call this difficult. And the great thing with this track is, on this section where it is a little bit more difficult, you don't have the steep fallaways either side. So the Mount Murray track up to the summit is about 2Ks long, and it's a pretty steady climb most of the way up. You can see there in the uh, right of frame the other mountains in the area um, and gives you a bit of a sense of the altitude that we're getting to. Mount Murray itself is at 1,640 metres according to my HEMA map. does sort of almost uh, sneak up on you. Now this is the section I was thinking of. That's actually the Mount Murray summit just over there. And this is the ridgeline section I was thinking of. This is a magic bit of track driving through here. It really is um, just absolutely stunning. Um, you've got the snow gums, you've got the views both directions and Mount Murray up ahead. You can see what's coming. Just a really great bit of track to drive. Hopefully soon I might have a, a drone airborne. I've had a drone for a little while as some people know. Just haven't had the time to spend on it to uh, get it up and running but um, hoping that's uh, it's going to change and we might start uh, being able to incorporate some drone footage into these videos as well which would be pretty awesome so this last hill here is is really the final approach up to the summit of Mount Murray and again this section is a nice steady even climb not super steep and not that rocky or difficult either. So in terms of summits in the high country to get to, as you'll see very shortly, Mount Murray offers some of the best views anywhere, and it's one of the easier ones to get to, in my opinion. So there's a camping area there, I believe, just off to the left-hand side. Uh, you can see campsites being set up there, and look at those views there to the south, even from here. The summit with the uh, survey marker is up on the second hill over here. Now, I'm not 100% sure why this seasonal closure gate is here, um, but um, yeah, that's where it is when the summit is actually over here. Um, now, there is a track that goes beyond the summit, but that is management vehicle use only. Uh, it's an old fire access trail and it's actually the end of the track that used to link up with Blue Rag back in the day. So if you watch the Blue Rag video that was two videos ago I think, then you would have seen where I suggested that that track used to link up. This track here that you'll see soon um, is the Mount Murray end of that track. You can see this final climb to the summit, a little bit loose and shaly but not difficult. And when you get up on the summit here, there's no trees around you. You have got literally views 360 degrees. It is absolutely cracking. Now look at that. 
love getting to places like this. It is so worth the view. Just taking it all in. So there's the actual survey marker. A little bit windy up here as you can possibly hear. And right there is the survey plaque. Now let me show you that view. It's a pretty clear day to, uh, when I was up here and you can see the hills just disappearing into the distance there. Absolutely outstanding. That background noise is the wind. As I said, one of the easiest summits to get to in the high country, in my opinion, and some of the best views that you get anywhere in the high country, in my opinion. So I definitely recommend you put Mount Murray on your list of peaks to check out. As you can see, that view just keeps going in every direction. And as I mentioned, there's the fire trail, which is management vehicle only. That, is, um, that goes down to a dead end, uh, down at the Wangangara River, near there. Um, that is um, management vehicles only, so don't drive down there. That is uh, the track that used to link up with Blue Rag. So obviously we loaded back up, headed off from Mount Murray, and we head to the Buckland Valley to head home. Didn't show the drive down Mount Murray, of course. So here we are. Back at that turn off where we've now turned left back onto the Jeep track or the Twins Jeep track. So we just skipped those couple of Ks coming down off Mount Murray. And you can see here, this section of track, you've got amazing views. Uh, it was getting sort of later in the afternoon by this time, keeping in mind that um, I've done this all in one day. So I've, I've left Albury, I've done the Guns track, um, from Harrietville up to the Dargo High Plains Road via Mount Sugarloaf, Blue Rag, all the way to the end and back. Had a bit of a poke around up there now, Mount Murray, and uh, heading home now. So, uh, you know, typical long day for me in the car. And this section of track is no exception for those obligatory 180 degree switchbacks. You can see the fire didn't leave much of those trees behind when it's come through here a couple of years ago. And this section of the Jeep track is really no different to the earlier section. It's a pretty steady, easy drive. Maybe got a little bit more gradient. Now, my plan was to take the Mount Murray track north. Um, however, when I've gone to turn down it, because I've never driven this track, I did see that sign there and um, the sign said the track was closed. Now, they don't have the bollards up or anything like that, but the, there is definitely the sign there. So you've always got to pay attention to those signs, even if they haven't blocked the track. If it says it's closed, it's closed. Uh, turns out it was probably a smart call um, not taking that track. I did run into a guy on a... A uh, motorcycle who is a local um, forestry worker and he said yeah that track has been pretty much destroyed um, car swallowing bog holes so a little bit further along here you can see that is uh, as noted there that's the split where on the left hand side is the continuation of the twins jeep track which takes us up to the northern end of the Selwyn Creek Road um, getting close to um, Mount Selwyn Summit um, and then the right hand section here which I've taken is actually the Mount Murray logging road so this is literally a road definitely two-wheel drive uh, and it's a really easy drive so the Twins Jeep track is marked on the HEMA as a medium track I really think it could be an easy but it's marked as a medium and the Mount Murray logging road that we're on now is marked as an easy and I definitely think that's, I mean, it's a road. 
Uh, it really is a road. So that's what I mean about Mounts, Mount Murray not being difficult to get to. You could come in via the Buckland Valley, uh, come up Selwood Creek Road, take the Mount Murray Logging Road onto the Twins Jeep Track and up to the Mount Murray Summit. Wouldn't be a long drive, wouldn't be a difficult drive, and you'd enjoy some of the best views in the high country. Or if you're coming the other way, you could come across on the Twins Jeep Track like I did today from uh, the Great Alpine Road near the northern end of the Dargo High Plains Road. So either way, plenty of easy ways to get to Mount Murray and check it out and spend some time there. Uh, now here we've actually joined back on to Selwyn Creek Road on a, on a hairpin. Little track there on the right hand side. Honestly, I did think about checking it out. Pretty sure it just goes down to a fishing and camping spot on the river and it was getting late in the day so that one was not for today but we'll be back gives us an excuse to come back you've always got to leave something on the table to come back you know and check out at a future time on another trip so Selwyn Creek Road is an even more main road it's a pretty easy quick run down here you can see probably from the pace of the video we're making a pretty good clip and it's really not too long before we're down in the base of the valley and um, you can see all the foliage down here the tree ferns that sort of thing because we've got the Buckland River East Branch running along the base of the valley here so a fair bit of water down here um, obviously uh, winter um, fills up a bit more than summer and not too far along we're actually coming up, you can see those tree ferns there on the right, we're coming up to Beverages Station. Quite a popular campground. Now I've never actually camped there myself. Um, so we did decide on this trip just to go in and check it out. Driven past it a lot of times, but usually again, I've got people with me, we're on a convoy, and you don't want to drag three or four other people just for a drive through a campsite to check it out. Uh, so being solo today, it was the perfect opportunity. You can see there as it's just come up on screen that's the end of the Mount Murray North Track so had I been able to take that Mount Murray North Track that's exactly where it would have come out there just a little bit further down this Selwyn Creek Road than what I was able to come out to today so uh, we'll have to drive that one another time when it's officially back open again so this is the southern entrance into Beverages Station camping area sort of stuck up on me there so I did have to turn around and come back and I thought I've got a bit of time it's not going to take long let's go in here and check it out and just see what the amenities are like and what the space is like so keep in mind guys this was the Australia Day long weekend pretty sure this was on the Saturday so um, people hadn't started heading home yet and most of the people who were going to be camping were here by now because it was Saturday afternoon. So already you can see coming in here there's a few different tracks going different directions and a lot of open areas you can see um, a few campers down the back there so the river sort of runs along that back section which of course makes that the popular location for people to camp now, I didn't want to disturb people too much, so I sort of stuck to these tracks along here. I really just wanted to get a sense of how much space was in here. You can see, look, there's some great little camp spots near this section of track, albeit away from the river. A little bit of water on the track here, but nothing to worry about. And both sides of the track, great flat campsites. And much less full than I was sort of expecting. Now, you do find that in the Buckland Valley. Uh, if you know the Buckland Valley and Buckland River Road, you know there's a number of campsites along there and typically the further in you go, the less full they become because a lot of people with vans and what have you, they, they want to get, get stop at the first campsite and they just don't push in any further. So Beverages is uh, pretty much the, uh, the last camping area and um, as such wasn't nearly as busy as I was expecting. Like even here that's the river on the right hand side there. 
if you win a big group, there's some uh, cracking little camp spots right there, backed up against the trees. You can see there's another group down here. So it is split into a couple of areas. Now around the camping area here, there is a large privately owned section that is still used for active grazing. That section is fenced off, so you need to keep that in mind that don't drive through grades, don't open the gates. Uh, it is privately owned land. You can see that nice open section of land there. What's probably not coming through on the screen or on the footage at this time is there is a chain wire fence along there. Um, and that is active grazing land that is privately owned. So just keep that in mind. But if you continue along the eastern side of that, we're basically heading north here. And you can see on the other side of the river there, there's some people camping over there, there because there's another campsite over there. Uh, you can see that fence now, uh, fencing off the grazing land. And to get over there where those guys are camping, you continue down this track or road. It's not too far, so all up this track's about one or two kilometers long. And certainly along here on this side, you wouldn't see to camp here. It's fairly exposed and close to the track. But you really don't have to go too far. There's a little crossing down here, a little ford across the Buckland River. And certainly at the time that I was here, it wasn't deep or fast flowing at all. Keep in mind this was summer that I was here. Lovely clear high country river. Barely enough to get the tires wet. Rocky little exit but uh, not overly difficult. And then this track uh, runs back up there to that camping area that you saw from the other side of the river. I didn't want to go down there and disturb those guys. Um, you can see some trail bikers or something who have been having some fun there. Um, and then uh, this is actually the start here of the Pheasant Creek track. Um, now, I wasn't going to drive this. This would actually take us back across to Guns Track. Um, towards Mount Sugarloaf. Um, I just wanted to have a look um, while I was here and um, yeah we, we might come back and do this one another time. Uh, also links you around to the Paddy Hill track um, and the Clear Creek track uh, so there's a there's a heap of tracks in there sort of between Harrietville and the Buckland Valley. So we did decide to head out. Now, the track we're on before just exited on the left of frame there. Um, and we're following the fence line around. So you come back south from that river crossing and then turn west. And before very long, you're back on Selwyn Creek Road. So although it feels fairly remote over there, you're really not far from the main road at all. So that's the northern entrance there to Beverages camp, Station Camping Area. And just coming into um, sort of the main junction near Beverages here, you can see some people camping on the right there. It's a pretty choice little camp spot down there, little intersection of two or three rivers, the um, Buckland River East Branch and the um, Pheasant Creek join it as well. Um, this is often a spot where when we're heading up to Selwyn or whatever, we'll pull in here and air down if we haven't aired down already, depending on the condition of this gravel road. 
So back on the Buckland River Road, heading north on our way out. Now we've just skipped about uh, probably five or six k's because you don't need to see me driving a gravel road, but I did come across this little track here, which is actually sort of this, the southern or the back entrance into Camp Flat, which is probably the second campsite um, when you're coming into the Buckland Valley and I've never driven it and it parallels the main road so I thought why not check it out so you've got a little ford there across the Buckland River and then the track just works its way along here and um, parallels the river there's a couple of little side tracks that I didn't take the time to investigate today um, down to fishing spots by the look of it and as you can see by the private sign on that gate there's actually a, um, some private property down here as well so a couple of houses what a cracking spot to live um, so keep that in mind again don't open gates and go into private property but uh, this is a pretty easy drive camp flat is a pretty popular camp spot um, actually has uh, its own little ford over the uh, Buckland River to get there so the camping area is actually broken into two parts and there's long drop toilets there at both of those parts as well nice little drive along here certainly better than just driving on the road at least in my opinion a little spring here feeding into the Buckland River Reasonably sharp little uh, depression there. So this is one of those side tracks just here, I think, that I mentioned that um, most likely heads down to an informal camp and or fishing spot on the river there. As most of you who watch these videos know, I'm not much of a fisherman, but I'm happy to eat the fish that other people catch. Uh, and here we are coming into the back end of the camp flat camping area. As you can see, a lot busier than beverages. Just a few k's down the road and way, 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 way busier. So I didn't film all the way through there because I don't want to put people on film who, you know, aren't expected to be filmed and put on YouTube. Uh, you get the idea though, it's pretty full. This is a little crossing here at the Buckland River again. Um, so that's one of the camping areas. Um, these entrances and exits here have been graded recently. They were getting a little bit rocky and steep. Um, and then just on the right on this side where those cars are parked, there's another little camping area down in there and a long drop as well as one on the other side as I mentioned and here we head back out to the main road and on our way from there so look guys like this video if you liked it thanks for watching subscribe to the channel if you like what we do in our content uh, and I will catch you in the next video so thanks again guys a little bit different this one but I hope you've enjoyed it